Two big longevity breakthrough stories have been getting a lot of attention recently. IL-11. We know that IL-11 does activate specific switches. And so what we did in a mouse is we were able to manipulate the genome and turn the gene off. And what we see is if you take away the IL-11 gene in the genome, aging diseases are much improved. Could this be the culprit of aging? Could knocking this gene out keep us young? But what about telomeres? This is the single most important drug discovery ever. It's, if you say, well, what is the drug? The drug is a synthetic alkaloid that stimulates the enzyme telomerase that makes telomeres. And it's a profound effect. So if you, if you make a few telomeres, you can extend longevity a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe four or 5%. But when you, when you take the telomere count up to like a tenfold, the dog's biology changes. It's like the wow. dog biologically is now half its age. Wow. I mean, it's, wow. it's, that's how dramatic it is. Now, both these breakthroughs are coming from credentialed scientists. But before we get our hopes up and cancel our gym memberships and just start boozing, let's dig a little deeper. As we know, the media cannot always be trusted. As a YouTube channel that almost exclusively uses the excitement around the cure for aging to get clicks, yes, we are very aware of how important it is to be thorough with vetting that information and not just trade on hype. Not that we're immune to it, okay, we get excited too, but we like to do our due diligence as well. And in doing so for these two stories, one stood out to us as looking very legit and promising, and the other one kind of smelled of a stock pump. So in this video, we're gonna let you know how we vet stories and compare these two side by side. Welcome to Lifespan News, I'm Emmett Short. It can be hard to trust anyone telling you that they've discovered the secret to living longer, especially when you don't understand the vocabulary. Is in this pathway, the ERK, which then phosphorylates B90 risk, this can then phosphorylate LKB1, a very important kinase, on two uh, positions, which inactivate. I was intrigued because of his accent, but then he said phosphorylates and I'm sold. So uh, I actually dosed 10 mice, 10 mice. Okay, so what I did is I gave them telomere in their the drinking water and I would take the mouse and I would follow the mouse from day one to day 10. And exactly 10 days from the time the mouse started drinking the water, they would convert from a, let's say they were equivalent of a 70 year old man to like a 35 year old man. What? Now someone might say that he doesn't seem scientific enough, but he is representing a genuine pharmaceutical company. And now that I say that, I can't decide if it makes it worse or better. Now, before we get too far in this video, head down to the comments and tell me which story you think is the most trustworthy right now. Mark the time code because I'm gonna have you do this again to see if your opinion changes over the course of the video. Now, let me break down the IL-11 story for you. Back in 2016, Professor Stuart Cook was researching interleukin-11, commonly known as IL-11, for a study focused on tissue building up and scarring. IL-11 is a protein that was initially recognized to signal immune responses to reduce inflammation and scarring in fish. In some fish, it even assisted in the regeneration of body parts. But prior to Cook, the scientific community basically assumed that IL-11 would be beneficial to any animal when active. Turns out that was completely incorrect. Cook and his team happened to notice that there was consistently an excessive amount of IL-11 in an old animal. So we studied it across ages in mice. And lo and behold, this gene, which we know does bad things, is going up in all tissues in the mouse with age. And so that opened the question that we knew it was a bad gene. When it gets turned on, it, it causes trouble, what we call multimorbidity. They went on to discover that IL-11 in mice was elevated in areas of tissue scarring and inflammation because it was causing tissue scarring and inflammation, not repairing it like in fish. And it does good things in the fish. Unfortunately for us, it's an evolutionary hangover that causes harm and it causes disease. It causes inflammation, fibrosis, and unfortunately stops our tissues from regenerating properly. In 2024, their breakthrough work with mice showed that by suppressing IL-11, they could successfully improve overall health and lengthen a mouse's lifespan by 25%. So this is showing you IL-11 knockout mice here on the left-hand side. And these are wild type mice and these mice are brothers all around 90 weeks old. And you can just see by looking into the cage that the knockout mice are leaner, more active, uh, their coat color looks better 
compared to their brothers who are the, the wild types. And what does this mean for us? Well, apparently it should work on humans just as well as mice. Here's assistant professor Anissa Wijaja. With NTI-11, we see improvements uh, in all the features of aging that we observe in mice. I would uh, emphasize that it is, this is in mice, but given one and one-to-one -one relationship between the effects of I-11 in human and mouse cells that we have seen so far in our study, others have shown it uh, as well, uh, very independent of us, both in academic institution mm. and pharmaceutical companies. So we think um, the likelihood that anti-11 therapy will work in human is there. Fortunately, IL-11 can be potentially genetically spliced out before birth or neutralized later in life as needed with an antibody. For human use, they would just need to develop the right antibody, get approval for it, approval for how to administer it, test it, find the most effective dosage. All in all, they might have something for humans by 2030. Now, for our other popular life extension breakthrough. Now, now let me break down the telomere pharmaceutical story for you, an ABC7 news report in Sarasota. Florida recently covered a new age reversal pill that was instrumental in helping two elderly dogs at an animal rescue. Meet Zeus, a 12-year-old German shepherd who is full of life. In March of 2024, a 12-year-old German shepherd named Zeus was diagnosed with terminal cancer and had his spleen removed. Nonetheless, he was given a poor prognosis. But his caretaker reached out to a clinical trial operated by Telomere Pharmaceuticals about a new medication that was being tested on dogs. And in April, she was given access to the medication, one pill per day, and she claims she saw results almost immediately. Within a few days, it didn't take long, we started to see that he's got some energy. And then, oh gee, he wants to go out and play. Oh. His appetite is back. I mean, things started rolling out after this, and it's right before your eyes. They considered the drug so successful that the animal rescue chose to administer it to another dog. Her 12-year-old 150-pound Newfie, Benson. My sweet. Who could barely walk due to severe arthritis. He started galloping. He started running a little bit. And he's a different dog. It's a feel-good story that is easy to share and celebrate. And it certainly gets our hopes up, right? In the end, two dogs suffering from different ailments were reportedly healthier and more energetic. The story sets the stage for a huge breakthrough in medicine. Essentially, they're providing hope for an easy one pill per day solution that can cure any illness, bring back the feeling of youth, and help us live longer. All in one magic pill that's effective within a few days. Here's the idea behind it. Because chromosomes are continually dividing, they tend to degrade over time. That degradation causes tissues to break down, causing aging. Theoretically, if our chromosomes could perfectly duplicate without any degradation whatsoever, our bodies would never show signs of aging. Our eyesight would remain sharp, our hair wouldn't turn gray, and our organs would continue to perform at peak function. Your chronological age could be 100, but your perfect chromosomes keep you looking 25. In reality, there is a limit on how many times our chromosomes can successfully divide. And that limit is based on telomeres. Telomeres are always described as protective tips on shoelaces. And I mean, always. Like if our chromosomes are shoelaces, then telomeres are the little plastic tips on the ends of those shoelaces that keep them from fraying away. They cap and protect the end of a chromosome like the end of a shoelace. So a telomere would be compared to the end of a shoestring. When a chromosome has no telomeres left, there's nothing to keep our DNA from just unraveling and then the cell dies. This can be true of any region of the body or multiple regions. But because everything is connected when heart cells degrade, less blood is pumped to the brain, which makes brain cells degrade and then the decay might cause the brain to fail. But since everything is connected, when heart cells degrade, less blood is pumped into the brain, which makes brain cells degrade and then that decay might cause the brain to fail to properly maintain another bodily function. The dominoes just start falling and we age more rapidly. And we develop diseases of aging across our whole body called multimorbidity. Over the past few years, there's been plenty of discussion about lengthening telomeres through proper diet and exercise. But the new medication by Telomere Pharmaceuticals is designed to lengthen those telomeres itself. The drug called Telomere 1 
is a modified version of an alkaloid taken from tobacco. It binds to metals like iron, copper, and zinc, and helps to modulate a pro-inflammatory cytokine called the interleukin-17. Obviously, long telomeres would prevent decay, but would longer telomeres reverse aging? Here's Telomere Pharmaceuticals special advisor, Dr. Michael Roizen. If you can increase telomeres, you can reproduce stem cells and keep repairing things so that you can get literally younger. There you go. The important takeaway is that there's plenty of science backing the idea that longer telomeres are one of the key factors in slowing aging, and Telomere Pharmaceuticals is working on a new drug that will enhance telomere growth. Okay, there we have it, right? Two recent stories about two different approaches to health and longevity. Is there one you believed more than the other? Leave a comment below. Okay, it's already difficult to have confidence in anything on the internet, right? Savvy people have developed a habit of trying to verify any information that seems fishy. Now, a few comparisons between these two stories that stuck out to me as strange. First, in the IL-11 study, Cook used a frailty score with 21 different factors to measure the improvement of the mice. Tremors, tumors, cataracts, hearing. And there are different ways of scoring this. This is a, a score that we have used in the lab, which is a 21 point frailty score, uh, which we can then score various things from tremor to tumors to cataracts to hearing, etc. But in the telomere story, the proof offered was anecdotal. All we know is that a dog had an operation, started healing afterwards, then started taking the medication and got better. But is it possible the dog would have healed at the same pace without the medication? If we aren't offered any proof either way, we can't be certain there's scientific evidence that the drug actually helped the dog. Second, the concept of longer telomeres to improve cell division does make sense, but improving cell division to slow aging is different than stopping the aging process or reversing it to make people younger. Longer telomeres to prevent age-related illness isn't quite the same as curing an age-related illness, but telomere seems to be offering a jumble of possibilities for what their intended product can achieve. Here's the company's co-founder, Frank O'Donnell. It can actually reverse aging and age-related diseases We've demonstrated it in mice ad nauseum. I haven't seen any evidence that any animal has ever started aging backward, but hey, maybe I missed something. If they're turning dogs into puppies, I missed it. Third, I think it is interesting that some people might trust a university-led study more than research from a pharmaceutical company trying to sell stock to potential investors. Meanwhile, someone else might distrust universities and put more faith in a business that's motivated to produce a good product to turn a profit. The study of IL-11 has evolved over the years that Cook has been researching it, and throughout all of those years, the next steps are directed by the outcome of experimentation. They're following where the science leads them. On the other hand, telomere has a stock symbol, but they are still in the research phase. And a recent video of one of the company's co-founders suggests that they could potentially pivot their operations to focus on veterinary services, indicating they are very keen to make money before it's proven safe for humans. The next inflection point for us is going to be veterinary. This drug works on a larger mammal, not just mice, but on a larger mammal that means something commercially, which is if we don't ever get to a human approval, we're going to have a gangbuster product for the veterinary market. 40 million dogs. We love our dogs. I can't fault a business for trying to make money, but it is a shame that this early on, that their motivation to extend human life is pending approval. Another thing that made me skeptical is it's difficult to verify anyone who works at Telomere using the internet. Meanwhile, if you search for Professor Stuart Cook or his research partner, Anissa Wijaja, there's a wealth of past interviews and social media activity and photos. There's even photos of them with other people. It's hard to trust that someone is sharing truthful information when you can't even verify their identity. And again, factually, this argument isn't airtight. People have a right to be anonymous, but it just leads to my next point, the biggest detail that seems to be agitating a lot of people is the recent passing of Telomere's founder, Chairman and CEO, Dr. Chris Chapman. People found that incongruity kind of striking. A new pill that could reverse aging, but then the chairman and founder of the company has, has died. He was 71. Hey, maybe he got hit by a bus, but if it was age-related or disease-related and he had access to this age reversal medication, come on, it's kind of shady. Would you want a heart transplant from a company whose CEO died of heart disease? Like, it wouldn't look great for Tesla if Elon drove an F-150. You want a plastic surgeon who looks like Steve Buscemi? No! 
Basically, I think what I'm saying is I want to buy my longevity hacks from a toddler, someone that looks like a toddler. That's that's how you know it works. Anyway, let's just hope it was a tragic bus accident. That sounds bad, but yeah. Okay, to make matters worse, as per my last point, there isn't much about him on the internet. Even his passing was only noted by a digital memorial on Legacy.com. And the picture used on that page is just a black and white version of the Chris Chapman photo on the Telomere website, which is a strange choice for a memorial, to say the least. The primary piece of information about Christopher Chapman's passing was a press release from Telomere. That just feels like a limited number of sources to verify the death of a man who we can't exactly verify was alive. But again, I wanna make it clear, we don't know. I'm not taking a stance on him or Telomere. I'm just saying it's difficult to know. It's hard. And without more information, there's no reason to fixate on this one detail and let it overshadow what could genuinely be an important pharmaceutical breakthrough. At the same time, if any of these details make you uncomfortable, if your gut is telling you that this is a stock market pump and dump conspiracy, maybe you just don't invest in this particular company until you have more details. And instead, look for longevity projects that you are comfortable investing in. To wrap it up, up, the medical field has always been a mixed bag of genuine advancement and flat out fraud, right? We have, we've had some very embarrassing examples that have become cliche, like prescribing cocaine for toothaches, heroin for a cough, plus a whole bunch of doctors who recommended smoking cigarettes. And whenever someone announces a new cure for aging, it can be tough to tell if we're being fooled. There are instances where people can be too quick to hop on the bandwagon or they spread skepticism that could hinder good science. Here's the big thing to keep in mind. Good science requires testing and that can take years, but the media ecosystem is all about what's happening today that will grab your attention and it just can be difficult to reconcile both ideas simultaneously. Ultimately, and somewhat ironically, that's gonna be a paradox that we grapple with repeatedly when we do cure aging. Every choice will be an evaluation of what will be important years from now and what's important right now. How are we gonna weigh decisions of the future against decisions of the present? The only way to know is to find a cure for aging and find out. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please thumbs up and subscribe. Visit lifespan.io for cutting edge longevity news and check out this video to see how AI is changing longevity science. See you soon.